Okay, so welcome everyone again to this continuation of my what is linear algebra series. Today, what is a characteristic polynomial or matrix roots or how to compute eigenvalues? We will see. But the main idea of the characteristic polynomial is not what you usually see, like it, it's the one that calculates eigenvalues for you. That's not quite true. The main idea is as follows. Whenever you have a polynomial, it's kind of today, nowadays, it's, it's kind of common knowledge <laughs> that when you have a polynomial, you should look at its roots. Um, a related question and the kind of a good question for a linear algebra problem would be, well, now you have a polynomial. In, in my case, I have this polynomial here. So uh, x minus one times x minus two times x minus three times x minus four, which expands as something, I don't care. Just that was this x minus one times x minus two times x minus three times x minus four. And well, we usually would say you uh, substitute x by some number, but you don't need to. You can basically substitute x by anything like a matrix. You can, you can have um, matrix minus one, meaning my n here minus the corresponding identity matrix, this times four times four, which I'm usually just write as identity instead of identity four times four. And times whatever, right? Just, just, just replace x by your matrix. Nothing fancy. You just have to interpret scalars as a scalar times identity matrix. Then you can make sense of a polynomial evaluated at a matrix. And the question would be, and that's what the characteristic polynomial wants to answer: is um, for a given matrix, can you find a polynomial such that your matrix is a root of the polynomial? So the, mat uh, the uh, polynomial annihilates my matrix. So let's let's go through this together. Um, so this red box is just my matrix from upstairs, but I've subtracted on the diagonal, as you can see, I've subtracted one because it's minus the identity. And in the green one, I've the same matrix, I've subtracted two from the diagonal because it's minus two times the identity and so on. Um, in the next case, I've subtracted three. In the last case, I've subtracted four. And the point is this zero that appears in those colored boxes. So you kind of kill those elements by subtracting the corresponding values. And well, you do this calculation and what you get is zero. So this is actually a root of the polynomial, which is a bit surprising, I think. I mean, just look at the matrices. By, by just multiplying them, there's a priori no reason why it should be zero. And this polynomial is really built in a very, very naive sense. I just looked at my diagonal entries and I just decided, okay, my diagonal entries actually should be the roots of, of the polynomial if I would interpret it as like roots in, in, in let's say, real numbers. And I just took those entries and I just subtracted them. Hmm. This is really weird. And this is already a big example. And if you would do the algebra, you would actually realize that this whole part is completely uh, unimportant. I could put anything here, okay? Really anything. It would still be annihilated. So that's something, if you if, if you do this calculation for the first time, then you should realize, oh, something is going on here. Those calculations don't happen randomly. So this just can't, uh, just can't work randomly. There's something going on here. And what's going on here is exactly the characteristic polynomial. Okay. Um, so how do we actually understand this miracle? Well, there's a way to do it. It's a really bad idea to just calculate whatever. Look at this polynomial, calculate m to the fourth, calculate m to the third, calculate m squared. Don't factor that polynomial, not a good idea. You get those matrices, nah, no, 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 not a good idea. What is much better is to look at really at the zeros, what's, what's happening here. So, um, um, so if I, I just took the, these two factors here, uh, so these two, and I just multiplied them together and I looked what ha was happening. And the point is those zeros that I created by subtracting the right values here, they are really basically killing everything. So if you do this calculation that then this row will, will always kind of be zero unless it hits something here, but you got rid 
of, of the, the one non-zero value in your matrix, which is, which is this blue box. Similarly, the row above, it kind of always gets zero unless you hit those two elements here. But the point is you got, you got rid of it in your, in your second polynomial because it was the x minus three thing. And here was a three and you subtracted it. Uh, similarly, other one was the x minus four and you subtracted it. So you automatically get two zero rows. And those two polynomials then will kill the other two rows. That, that's exactly what's going on. That's kind of funny. I mean, that's kind of funny. It's, it's, this wasn't a hard calculation. It was uh, basically said you don't need to calculate those polynomials. It, it's kind of built to work. And that's, that's true in this case. Um, okay, yeah, good. So what have I done? Well, I took a matrix. I was an upper triangular matrix. I had zeros below in the diagonal. Here, only zeros, right? I looked at the diagonal entries. I created a polynomial from the diagonal entries and the polynomial annihilates my matrix. I mean, I don't know how you feel. I think that's already a funny observation. Doesn't happen. Why should that happen? And the characteristic polynomial is now the idea that basically this works for any matrix. Um, let me explain. So the characteristic polynomial um, of a matrix is basically, it, it should be kind of the minimal polynomial that annihilates the matrix. There are some multiplicities with eigenvalues. Don't worry about them too much for now. But basically, it should be the minimal, so minimal in the sense of degree polynomial that annihilates your matrix. And if you look at this example, and really the surprising fact is that this example is a typical example, it generalizes. And all I did is I, I, I took my eigenvalues, so the eigenvalues of this matrix sit by definition on the diagonal. Why is that? Well, whenever you have, well, I need a bit more space maybe, whenever you have a matrix which is constant zero down here and you multiply it with some vector, then, well, you can already see what is, what's happening, right? Let, let's take, take the last row. The last row annihilates everything except the last entry, and the last entry is just multiplied by, uh, so let me call this lambda n, is just multiplied by lambda n, da, 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 da. Uh, lambda n, y n, y, whatever. So the eigenvalues by definition sit on the diagonal of this matrix. And all I did is I said, okay, take the eigenvalues, create a polynomial, which has those eigenvalues precisely at, the, at, at, at uh, as the roots. And this polynomial annihilates my matrix. Um, and the point is, and this is really surprising and beautiful and surprising, it works in general. Take any matrix, here's a crazy matrix. Well, you can't see what the eigenvalues are just just by looking at it, just no way to see it. And they are also not super nice in this case. Um, but still, you would take, okay, so how does it work now? Here comes a, a completely bogus argument, but it works. That's, that's kind of a funny thing. Um, okay, so let's look at this expression. M V equals lambda V. So lambda is the one we are interested in. Well, we can do it like this, M V. So M minus lambda identity times V equals zero. Okay. Um, so we kind of want to solve this equation and this should hold for, for basically all V if you want. Um, so what you really want to solve is this equation where I swap the sign because it, it, it's a little bit nicer. So I can multiply this equation by minus one and that would get exactly this one here. And let me just let me just call. Okay, let, let me multiply this equation by minus one. So I would get lambda identity minus m times v should be zero. So I'm kind of looking for the kernel of this matrix here. And I just decide to call lambda a variable x. That's all I do. I just call it x. And I'm, I'm looking for the determinant of this matrix, which is now a polynomial of degree n if m is an n, n cross n, uh, m, n, n times n matrix. 
And this expression obviously annihilates M. Why? Well, the bogus calculation would be, okay, um, and this calculation actually works, which is fun. Which is fun. It's, it's strictly speaking, uh, not a proof, but it, it works. So sometimes in mathematics, there are just calculations that doesn't, they do not make sense. And you have to think about it, how to make them um, rigorous, but actually they are correct in some sense. And this is one of those calculations. So Euler was an expert in doing this. He just did so many basically random calculations. All of them were great. And it, it took 200 years to make them rigorous. It's not as bad here, but it's kind of an Euler type calculation. So P of M, so P is defined as this, is determinant of X identity, uh, sorry, of M identity, because I uh, substituted M by M minus M, this is of course zero. So yeah, this, this polynomial annihilates my matrix. And as I said, the characteristic polynomial should be the annihilating polynomial. So this is the characteristic polynomial. And the fun fact about this description is um, the characteristic polynomial, which I kind of defined beforehand, like take your eigenvalues and make them the roots of the characteristic polynomial. This is kind of an independent expression of, I don't need to know the eigenvalues to do this calculation. So all I need to do is to calculate this determinant and I get a polynomial and I need to find its roots instead of finding the eigenvalues. Um, here's an example, you would take uh, well, X, so, so why is it a polynomial? Let's just do an example here. So if you take this matrix, all you do is, well, these are my blue entries and you put them with a minus sign just just leave them where they are, just put a minus sign, and on the diagonal, you put an x. And that's it, and you calculate the determinant, which in this case is just x minus one times x minus three. Um, this would should be a three, minus six. Uh, no, actually, and no, actually the four was correct. This should be a four. <laughs> x minus one times x minus four minus six. And finding the roots of this polynomial is equivalent to finding the eigenvalues of the matrix. Okay, I say it again. And this is, by the way, how people would define nowadays the uh, characteristic polynomial. But actually, it, if you see just this definition, okay, why should this be interesting? The point is the uh, characteristic polynomial actually should be defined as the polynomial whose roots are the eigenvalues. And this is just an alternative description. And this is useful for calculations, but this is not telling, telling you anything. No, the characteristic polynomial by definition should be, basically it should be the, uh, the, 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 the polynomial of degree N whose roots are the eigenvalues of my matrix. Um, if you know a little bit about algebraically closed fields and, and kind of the fundamental theory of linear algebra, this is a little bit of cheating what I'm doing here, but that doesn't really matter. So for calculation purposes, this is the right one um, or it, not, not the right expression, but it's, it's actually a good expression. Uh, but what I would like you to keep in mind is that the characteristic polynomial is nothing else than the kind of the minimal annihilating polynomial of your matrix and it's built such that the eigenvalues are the roots and that the eigenvalues are the roots forces uh, the characteristic polynomial basically to annihilate the, the, uh, the matrix itself, right? This would be then the formal definition. As I said, this is a definition, blah, 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 blah. It's a determinant of this matrix and the determinant of this matrix, but if you think about it a little bit and if you have done two or three of these calculation examples, you will see that this is a polynomial and polynomial of degree X in M. Um, and so it's kind of the opposite. So as I said, this is nowadays defined as a characteristic polynomial. And then you would uh, verify that it has the properties. I like to think about how to define the characteristic polynomial. Namely, it annihilates my, my matrix and the roots of the characteristic polynomials are exactly the eigenvalues of of n, at least if you work over something like, like the complex numbers. Uh, don't worry about it too much, but this should be kind of, this should be, this should be the definition 
And this is the definition. So this is how to think about it, and this is how to work with it. Okay, so um, the main point, let me summarize, of the characteristic polynomial is that it gives you a way to calculate eigenvalues. And eigenvalues, as we have seen, are kind of the interesting points because uh, it, it are interesting because they are they they they, they, they tell you what, what kind of fixed axis the um, the matrix has. Um, there should be, of course, there is a relation from eigenvalues to eigenvectors, which I'm going to discuss in another video for diagonalization. But basically, the first thing you need to calculate are the eigenvalues. How does it work? Well, you calculate this expression and you solve for roots. That's it. Um, but let me let me actually come back to where I started. Why do I really like uh, um, like this alternative definition of the characteristic polynomial as a minimal minimal annihilating polynomial? Um, is for instance, if you take this matrix which I have seen before, and I just calculated the characteristic polynomial for you. Well, I did it here, but I didn't factor it. So this is what what comes out. Whatever. Um, and this tells you that there is a relation among the powers of a matrix, right? So P of M equals zero, because it is a characteristic polynomial. So this is good, characteristic polynomial. This implies that you just plot it in. And M squared equals five M minus two. And with minus two plus two, I really mean two times identity. I'm not, I'm too lazy. I don't, I'm not going to write it anymore. So the scalar has been uh, usually identity matrices, times that scalar. Okay, so this tells you that m squared actually can be computed by using m only. So there's a relation between m squared and m. And you could go on, you, you can multiply this equation now with m, and you get a relation for m, for m uh, cubed in terms of, well, you just do the algebra, and you see that m cubed actually, again, is an expression in m. But you never need to compute higher powers of uh, of of m. It's you only need to know m in this case because characteristic polynomial is two uh, is of order two, and all higher powers are already determined by that by, by this recursion, m cubed in terms of m, and well here's just how the calculation looks like. So you can compute m cubed so twenty times m plus ten. Well, 20 time, uh, 27 times this matrix plus 10 identity matrix is something, it doesn't matter, but I never cubed M. And I could go on. I, I could now go to the 100th power, to the fourth power. So the 100th power will also be some linear combination of, of M, so subscalar times M plus subscalar. You never know, need to know higher powers. And this is a really cool fact about matrices. So a two by two matrix, Always is a characteristic polynomial of degree two, which means you never really need to compute higher powers than one. A three by three matrix has, would have a characteristic polynomial of degree three, would never need to compute higher power, in, in principle at least, would never need to compute powers higher than two, and so on and so on. It's, I think, a pretty cool um, fact or application or whatever of knowing the characteristic polynomial. Okay, and as usual, thank you for your attention and hope to see you next time.